In this video, I am going to discuss about the ultrasound guided superficial cervical plexus block and I am also going to clear your doubts regarding the superficial and the intermediate cervical plexus block technique. I have already uploaded the landmark guided technique for the superficial cervical plexus block. You can check it out. Practically speaking, you may not need the ultrasound guidance always for the superficial cervical plexus block. The landmark guided technique is simple and easy to perform. The block technique, particularly the plane for the local anesthetic injection in case of ultrasound guided superficial or intermediate cervical plexus block is highly confusing in some online videos or even in the books or articles by popular authors. My intention is not to criticize anyone. Here, we will try to understand the correct technique logically. You will decide whether it is right or wrong. So, without wasting time, let's begin. The patient is placed in either supine, semi-sitting or lateral position and the head is turned towards the contralateral side. Next, you have to identify the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. If it is difficult to locate, then just ask the patient to lift the head of the bed. It will help you to identify even in the obese patients. We use high frequency linear transducer to perform this block as it is very very superficial block. The transducer is placed over the lateral portion of the neck in transverse or horizontal orientation about halfway between the mastoid process and the clavicular head of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This point usually corresponds externally to the level of the thyroid cartilage notch or the crossing of the external jugular vein over the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So let's try to understand the sonoanatomy before going into the details of block technique. If you have watched my video on distribution of cervical fascia and its different layers, relevant to the cervical plexus block, there are two important layers. One is the investing layer and another one is the prevertebral or paravertebral layer of deep cervical fascia. Here on the screen you are seeing the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The hyperechoic line immediately posterior to the sternocleidomastoid here is investing layer of the deep cervical fascia. And please note the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia is splitting here and encasing the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The next layer is the prevertebral or the paravertebral layers covering the muscles. The other important surrounding structures here are internal carotid artery, internal jugular vein, and the elements of brachial plexus. The needle is inserted from posterolateral to anteromedial direction in in-plane technique. You can use out-of-plane technique also. The target area of interest is the lateral end of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The sensory branches can be visualized as multiple small round or oval hypoechoic nodules around the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Even if the nerves are not visualized, you can just identify the correct plane and deposit the local anesthetic. That will be sufficient. In my previous discussion, I made it clear that if you deposit the local anesthetic superficial to the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia, that will be your superficial cervical plexus block. If you pierce the investing layer and deposit the local anesthetic between the investing layer and the prevertebral layer, that will be your intermediate cervical plexus block. And if you pierce both the layers, that is investing as well as the prevertebral layer and deposit the local anesthetic around C4 element or above, that will be your deep cervical plexus block. So please listen to me carefully. If you are piercing the investing layer, that will be no longer a superficial cervical plexus block. So while performing the anatomical landmark or LOR guided superficial cervical plexus block, the bounce we are experiencing is coming from the resistance offered by this investing layer of the deep cervical fascia. Remember, if you are getting a pop here after the bounce, that means you have pierced the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia. Hence, it will be the intermediate cervical plexus block. That is why the use of blunt tip needle and the feeling of bounce is very very important while you are performing it with the 
landmark guided technique. So it is now clear that we perform the superficial cervical plexus block at the level of C5, C6 or C6, C7 and the local anesthetic is injected subcutaneously as a field block superficial to the deep cervical facial layer to cover all or specific cutaneous branches. The local anesthetic you can use according to your practice. I personally use 0.2% propivacaine or 0.25% bupivacaine around 8 to 10 mils with uh, 4 to 8 milligrams of dexamethasone for superficial cervical plexus block. Please do not forget to take extra precautions while inserting the needle to avoid injury to the external jugular vein. Externally, it is covered by the probe as we are placing the probe over the area where EJV is crossing the lateral border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. On the ultrasound image, it will also not be visible because of the pressure of the probe as the vein is very superficial and in some patients, it is bulging out of the skin surface. Because of the irregularity of the area, if you try to release the pressure over the probe and visualize the vein on the screen, the contact with the surrounding structures will be lost. In landmark guided technique, we usually choose the needle puncture point slightly tefalar to the point of crossing over of EJV. With the ultrasound guidance, best way out is to identify the EJV and keep it out of your needle trajectory. That's all for today. Thank you for your patient listening. If you have any questions related to the cervical plexus block, please write it in the comment section. I will try to answer and explain it. We'll catch you in the next video. Until then, keep blocking, keep rocking.